uh, Illinois State Redbirds are with us. They have a Dayton Championship game tomorrow with Loyola. Coach Dan Muller is in the middle. William Tinsley and Phil Fain represent the student body. We're going to start off with a statement on the game from Coach Muller. Then we'll go to questions for just the two student athletes of the Redbirds. Dan, please. Hard fought game. Um, always credit to Barry and the way his teams commit, um, compete. Um, we had to gut it out as usual. You know, you feel like you don't play, you didn't play your best, but we found a way to win. Phil was obviously huge down the stretch. A lot of guys made big plays, but uh, survive in advance. Right here, Jim. Okay, Phil, you missed two free throws. Coach Muller said some words to you. You missed the next one, and then you make eight in a row at the end there. What happened? No, no it's just um, my teammates kept talking to me throughout the stretch, like, Phil, we believe in you. You're in for a reason. Um, we work on this day in, day out at practice. You shoot 100 free throws every practice and everything. So that kept giving me inspiration. Coach Muller <laughs> gave me inspiration. So I just knew I had to come through for him at the end. What was nice. What did he say? Oh, uh, that's between me and Coach Muller, man. <laughs> Can't let you know that one, but j nice. just know. <laughs> also, Phil, uh, you guys are five and one in overtime games. What, why are you guys so successful in overtime? What, what is it about this team that kind of lets you guys just pull through? I think down the stretch, we know we have to buckle down and everything. We're um, really good um, at, ending ga at ending games. Like, um, we work on it a lot in practice. Um, and the, end the game situations and everything, we know that when it comes down to it, we need to buckle down, lock, lock down more on defense and everything. So we're real good when it comes to um, end the games just because we practice it so much and we're just – put in the situation so much in practice thanks to this guy right here. And we're able to um, get it done in the late game situations. Uh, William, you had a little tough shooting night last night. Um, what, what was the difference tonight for you? Uh, shooting mentality, you know, just don't dwell on the past. I'm going to worry about the future, worry about this game and get my shots up in pregame. And just it, my shot was feeling good. So I, just, I knew I was going to make shots coming in, right mindset. Have to ask you about the technical there. From from your vantage point, mm -hmm. what happened? Uh, I was just being competitor, you know. I was just letting, yep, yep. I was just just being a competitor, just my competitiveness in, in me, and just just being dumb. So that was my fault. Stay here, uh, Phil. In, in the overtime, uh, you guys got Pippen out of the game. Obviously, the the emphasis was to was to get inside to you. Did you obviously feel you had a really big advantage there when he left the game? Uh, yeah, the emphasis that was that was a big emphasis. And like I said, my teammates still have faith in me. I missed a couple early on. They were um, still throwing it in, and it was just to get it in and try to um, finish to get to the get to my shot. Here, Todd. Uh, Phil, I think you scored the first eleven for them in overtime. Just where did you go from? You know, I'm having a good game. I'm putting the team on my back right now. Uh, just, just like I said, like my teammates just um, put faith in me, and they were, kept feeding me the ball, and then they depended on me to score the shot. So I knew I had to do it for them and everything. And they, um, like I, they just kept feeding me, and that, and I kept feeling it. So I just, once you got the hot hand, it feels like you can't miss. It feels like a, a ocean. So, yeah. <laughs> Phil, in the beginning of the game, Southern was doing a good job of collapsing on the paint and making some of those uh, looks near the rim really difficult. What adjustments did you and other guys, the other guys on the front court make in order to get better looks uh, near the rim and fake out Southern's defenders? Uh, we were just hoping to um, spread the ball around, um, give it to our shooters. Like, Boog had a great night tonight shooting and everything. Um, we had just giving it to our shooters to be able to spread the ball out and um, open up the inside for us. Uh, William, uh, you're one of the new guys. What the what has the last two days been like for you, and what do you expect tomorrow? Oh, it's been fun, you know, preparing and uh, all all what the behind the scenes work. It's it's really fun. I'm loving every bit of it, and I'm just getting you know losing myself in the game is just really fun. Uh, William, this you know obviously your first year with the team, uh, kind of an up and down ride this year. Uh, can you talk about what it means right now to, you know, advance to the finals and, and have a chance to play for the uh, Valley title? You know, it means a lot. You know, this whole season we're, we're fighting through adversity. You know, it shows a lot out of a man. You know, when adverse times hit, how are you going to answer back? You know, we answer back pretty well this whole season, up and down with David and Keyshawn coming out and Phil being sick and all that. We, we all came together as, a, as, a, as one, and we just fought through hard times. 
Uh, Phil, you're one of the returning guys from last season. What did you learn from playing in a championship game that maybe will be useful tomorrow? It's loud. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> nah, just um, really keep your composure when you're playing and everything. Um, just, just um, you know, it's a championship game, but then again, you still it's still a game, and you just gotta keep your composure. Your preparation before the game has to be great and everything. So I'm just talking to my teammates about that ones who've never um, been in this situation before, seeing that I was here last year about it, and then getting them prepared for tomorrow. Right hand side, gentlemen. Phil, last year before the championship, you guys had all the early games, noon, 2.30. You know, playing later, how does that affect your prep? Do you think that affects it at all? No, I don't think that affects our prep at all, just because we're a great oh, – I think we're a great prep team, and the way we prep and our mindset is is amazing. So I think we're going to be good. Right here. Oh, William, you just played Loyola last week. You, you obviously had a great game there. Mm -hmm. What can you – uh, use from that game to maybe help you tomorrow? Uh, all like the little defensive mayhaps we had, but besides that, just, you know, look at our strengths and what we did well that game and just have a carryover for the next when we play tomorrow in the championship. Right hand side, gentlemen. Um, you, anybody on the team is uh, injured right now? You think, uh, like, how are you doing, Phil? Are you feeling good? Feeling great. Everybody's great. Feeling like Superman. <laughs> Everything's all good. You know, one time I think in early in the game, I think, but you came back. Oh, huh? uh, that was just a misunderstanding, the ref. He didn't, he thought I was hurt since he said since I blew the whistle, you might as well step out. So it was okay. Oh. Came right back in. Came out the phone booth. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else for the student athletes of Illinois State? Okay, gentlemen, you are dismissed. Thank you very much for your time. We'll see you on Sunday. We're going to stay here with Coach Muller a little while longer. See you, man. First questions on the aisle, second row. Coach, last year uh, Matt Hine had a really difficult Saturday. Uh, today he was huge for you guys, same team, uh, same yeah. event. Uh, what was it like to see that, that kind of turnaround from last year to this year? And he, him have such a big game. Yeah, of course. I mean, that didn't cross my mind, of course, until you just said it. But Matt's come a long way. And uh, he's not only played well for us this year, but been a huge part of a lot of wins, big plays. Uh, he was terrific tonight on both ends. And we had a lot of guys who improved a lot over the last year. You know, we try to help him improve player development, mental training. And, and, and he's, he's a really good player. Next three questions are on the left hand side. Go, please. I have two. I that's okay. got it. <laughs> um, care to share what you did say to Phil? Sent you know, I just, I, I mean, it's not a big deal. I just talked about, you know, the shots he shot and, and the confidence he should have and just told him something to relax. But um, he works on it. Any, any, just newsflash, any bad free throw shooter works on the free throws, not just Phil. So it can be tough. You're up there on your own, alone. It can get in your head. But... Obviously, he was huge on that line down the stretch. A lot's been made about Loyola's possibility of getting to the tournament. Yep. It's been a while for you guys, too. And yes, it has. You probably remember. In the yes, past I do, um, unfortunately. But, um, but what would it mean for the program, and especially given last year, just how close and you know, possibly deserved it was? For you? you know, I'm not really sure yet, to be honest. Um, of course, it would be huge. Everybody wants to go. It's been too long for us. Um, and I say us because I'm a part of this program, not just the last six years, but the last 24 years, I guess. Um, fans deserve it, you know, all those good things. But um, I said it before, I'm hoping if we win, both we both get in. And our focus right now, obviously, is just have the right mindset to play. Old. we got to take care of our bodies and go out there and play. Last year's game didn't have anything to do with it. And we've been there three out of the last four years now, but we don't really have a lot of guys on the team who've experienced that. So... Hopefully we win. You can ask me that question, but right now I'm, I'm not. I honestly am not really sure what it would mean. I mean obviously, it'd be big, but I'm not sure how to put it into words yet. Coach, your team. You've de you've dealt with emotionally exhausting semifinal games here before. I remember yes. 2015 Wichita State in particular, and then having to go in and play Northern Iowa the day after that. How are you? How are you going to try to help your players get over an emotionally exhausting game like this one? And, transition into an, another important game tomorrow. Yeah, we did. We had a very similar uh, run that, uh, a few years ago, a tough Friday game. 
um, a really, really, really tough Saturday game and then came back and obviously had a great first half. And I don't know if we ran out of gas or just kind of changed our mindset at halftime. I think it was a combination of both. But I'll, I'll certainly talk about that. And look, these kids are fine. I mean, they're 21 years old. They'll be all right physically. Um, can they handle the, the mental part of it? There's pressure on both teams. Same, same for us, same for Loyola. But we'll certainly work on that and talk about our experiences. Dan, how much of an advantage did you think you guys had going into overtime because Pippen was out and obviously yeah. Wiley is, is, is not healthy? You know, I thought they were getting tired in the first half and then they just outcompeted us in the second half. And so going into overtime, we are, probably the greatest advantage we had mentally was we were 4-1. And we talked about that. The second greatest advantage was Pip was in foul trouble. Fletcher had four. Smith Peters had four. So we knew foul trouble could be an issue. And we talked about that. We knew they couldn't do certain things. But we went into Phil for a reason. Um, Pippen out. We thought we had an advantage. He was making his free throws. And um, he delivered. Right hand side, Dan. Last weekend, uh, Crutwick kind of beat you guys up pretty good. Uh, do you think Pippen today was a good test for that? And how do you go about stopping Crutwig tomorrow looking ahead to tomorrow's game? Yeah, he didn't kind of. He dominated us. Um, we've been really good in the post the last two days. Obviously, we don't have the most physical guys. And so take a little bit more effort, a little bit more game planning. Uh, we've got to help him a little bit better. But bottom line is Phil is twice as healthy now as he was a week ago. And you can see the way he's playing. Um, David will play better. So we, we, we've got to do a much better job. Crutwig had 20-whatever, and Jackson hurt us. Their, their bigs killed us. So we, we've got to do a way better job on those guys. Uh, Coach, can you just kind of talk about, you know, what uh, William means to you guys, mm -hmm. uh, especially over this past month? I mean, I think he entered February, you know, averaging, you know, less than like four points. And, and since then, I think he's rattled off six double-digit six double right. games since then. Can you just kind of talk about what he means to you guys? He was the last guy of our top 10 to reach double figures this year, which is amazing. And he's the only guy on the team who's played in every game. Um, so um, sometimes it just takes a while for guys. We haven't, we haven't changed one thing with what we've been doing within the last three months, not one. Just worked on his mentality and understanding of the game and what shots to take, encouraged him. But uh, he's becoming a big time threat a big time threat offensively and he's becoming a big time rebounder which obviously our team needs so and, he, and and boogie's like he's never gets tired like ever i mean his body is he's just naturally gifted with that he's never tired like right now he, he'll be fine um so that allows him to play big minutes and he never literally never have to worry about him as far as getting fatigued left hand side here dan yeah, Dan, uh, last year in this game, I think it was, Matt Hine had a really rough yeah. outing. And, and uh, the, the progress that he's made in a year, um, is that pretty unusual for a guy to do what he's done? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is. Uh, you know, it, it shows his development, number one, uh, his toughness. But Matt's had a great year and been a part of huge wins throughout the entire year. Um, it is somewhat of a coincidence that it's the same team, same game, and he has this huge game. But uh, he's had games like this throughout the year. Last time we played him, Keyshawn was out, and he was big time. And so um, that's a big part of why we're playing well. Dan, what do you think the reason is that you guys have been successful in overtimes this year? You know, we do work on it, but most teams do. I don't know if we work on it more than anybody else. Um, I think the experience um, of being in them not just overtime, been a lot of close games, as you know. And then you get a little confidence, and that can snowball some. Um, but in the end, you got to make plays, obviously. And we've just been able to focus just a little bit more, maybe fight just a little bit more if we're tired, and, and get stops, obviously. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know, but I like it. And, and you could see in our guys' face, and I said, it, guys, we're 4 and one overtime. Yeah, we are. And so you, you could tell we had some confidence when we, when we went back on the court. Anything else for the head coach of Illinois State? Okay, Dan, thank you very much. Thank you, guys.